This is the day that the Lord has made, and so we gather and rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this Veterans Day weekend. I'm Pastor Fritz Fowler, and I have the joy of serving as Trinity's lead pastor, and it's my joy to welcome you this morning to worship. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us on our website, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in and being a part of our worship service. If you're participating in worship and it's no longer Sunday morning, we hope that as you worship with us here that you feel God's presence and God's love in your life. For those of you who are guests this morning, thank you for joining us. There are welcome cards in the pew racks in front of you. If you feel comfortable, we invite you to fill one out and to drop it in the offering baskets or hand it to a pastor at the end of the service. There is um, a place to put prayer requests. If you would like a pastor to reach out to you or you have a question, there's a spot there for you to fill that out. On page one, there's a QR code that you can also do it electronically uh, this this, this morning, or really 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Today's a special day here at Trinity. Not only are we celebrating Veterans Day weekend, uh, but we are thanking Pastor Bill for his service as one of our pastoral associates, and so we, as a part of our sending, will bless Pastor Bill with a farewell and Godspeed as well as welcoming this morning Reverend Dr. Guy Irwin, who is the president of United Lutheran Seminary. Back to Trinity. The last time he was with us was in October 2021 for Reformation Sunday, and we were still worshiping outdoors, so we are able to have a little bit warmer this morning. It was a cold Reformation Sunday back in 2021 as we worshiped out on the lawn this uh, a few years ago, so... You'll notice here, thank you to our our worship hub and to um, our our gathered folks who helped. You'll notice that the modesty panel in the front pew uh, has been removed to provide more seating for ADA accessible uh, uh, folks and a little bit more space up here up front. And so you'll also notice that uh, TV has been mounted this week. The LED panels will be installed uh, this week, and so it's about to take two to three days, and so we look forward to that as well. So a few changes that you'll see in the sanctuary this morning. It's my with joy to introduce to you Craig Dietrich, who's going to offer our mission minute this morning for Veterans Day. I'm a proud veteran, having served with the United States Air Force at Rhein-Main Air Base in Germany. We are here to honor the careers of two of Trinity's members as they conclude their military service and begin their retirement. If I can call them forward. U.S. Navy Captain John Hahn. John was born in Seoul, South Korea. Captain Hahn immigrated to the United States with his parents and a younger sister at the age of six in 1974. He graduated from the University of Michigan with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics and then earned his law degree at the American University. Captain has served as an officer in the United States Navy Judge Advocate General's Corps for a total of 30 years, six years on active duty, and the last 24 in the Navy Reserve. Captain has served in California, Italy, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Pennsylvania. During his naval service, he successfully performed duties as a military judge, prosecutor, defense counsel, general counsel, and as attorney in civil litigation, international law, family law, and appellate review. 
John has been married to his wife, Ashley, since 2005, and they have three children, Caleb, Chloe, and Christian. John and Ashley have been members of Trinity since 2008 and are active with their children in many different activities. John was on church council and participated in the recent call counting for Pastor Jonathan. U.S. Air Force Chief Master Sergeant Deborah Volker. Chief Master Sergeant Volker is the Chief of Command Support Staff, a violinist with the Air Force Strings in the United States Air Force Band, Washington, D.C. Originally from Lansdale, Pennsylvania, her Air Force career began in 1993. Deborah is a graduate of Temple University, where she earned a Bachelor of Music degree in violin performance. She earned a Master of Music degree from Northwestern University, and she also earned a Doctorate of Musical Arts degree in violin performance from the Catholic University in America. <clears throat> in addition, she has earned two associate in applied science degrees, one in emergency medical services from Northern Virginia Community College and one in music from the Community College of the Air Force. She actively volunteers as a paramedic with the Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department, where she currently holds the positions of president and rescue captain of the Franconia, Virginia, Volunteer Fire Department. Sergeant Volker has served in Texas, Washington, D.C., Al Udid Air Base, Qatar, and most recently Bethesda, Maryland. Sergeant Volker has served as a violinist, music director, and chief of the Air Force Strings a unit of the United States Air Force Band, and as the unit deployment manager, non-commissioned officer in charge of the Floyd Worley Library, chief of supply, and the chief of the commander support staff of the United States Air Force Band. The highlight of Chief Volker's career was having the honor to deploy as the non-commissioned officer in charge of the U.S. Air Force Central Band in 2009-2010, performing for coalition services at the al Udid Air Base Cutter. She and her husband, John, live in Burke, Virginia, where they have just been joined by a puppy, Teddy, who is being trained as a third dog to serve the Red Cross program at the Walter Reed Army Hospital. Deborah has been a confirmed member of Trinity since 1980 and continues to support Trinity by sharing her talent during special services. And if you remain for the 1045 service, you'll know what I'm talking about. Trinity Disciples combined Captain Hahn and Chief Master Sergeant Volker's careers represent over 60 years of dedicated service. Please join me in thanking each of them for their service to our country. Thank you both. Thank you. And thank you to all of our veterans here. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. People of God, we continue on page two of your bulletin with confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. 
Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you and our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome in. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us sing together, my Lord, what a morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. Let us pray together. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's holy word. A 
A reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I would like to tell you a story from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then the kingdom of God will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. Now the ones who were foolish brought no oil with their lamps, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there came a shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Get ready to meet him. Now all the bridesmaids got up and began to trim their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Oh, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise said to the foolish, No, no, we do not have enough for both you and us. You had better go out to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. So while they were off buying it, the bridegroom came, and all who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Now the other bridesmaids came saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Hmm, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise. The assembly is invited to be seated. I'd like to invite forward any of the children who want to come forward for our sermon on the steps. Come on up here this morning. Come on up. Hey, good morning. Hey, it's really good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning. It's really great to see you all here this morning. You guys want to come up for the sermon on the steps? You don't have to. If you change your mind, that's okay, okay? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here this morning. I'm really glad that you're here this morning. And last week, I introduced to you to a friend, Pastor Jonathan, right? And this week, I want to introduce you to another friend, Pastor Guy. Pastor Guy Irwin. Good morning. Good morning. So, and, and Pastor Guy is a seminary president. What does that mean, though? I'm just kind of like a pastor and a teacher at the same time. 
I run a school. Wow. Who goes to school here? Raise your hand if you go to school. Wow, okay. And how many people are at your school, Pastor Guy? Well, we have almost 300 in all, but most of them are online. Oh. So they watch, they do their classes through the computer. Got it. Wow. But some live with us and are right there, right at the end. Okay. And so where, you guys know Connor? Where's, where's Connor, who's our field ed student? Where's Connor? Right here, there's Connor. Connor is one of Pastor Guy's students over there. He attends the seminary that Pastor Guy's the president of. So, That's right. um, uh, 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 do you guys have any questions for Pastor Guy? <coughs> huh, sorry? No? I have a question. I'm wearing this white garment, which is called an alb, but Pastor Guy is wearing different colors. What color is he wearing? Purple. What does that mean? Well, that's really because I used to be a bishop before I was a seminary president. But this kind of a gown is what one wears to preach in when one is not celebrating communion. Okay. So a different outfit. A different outfit. And what about this blue thing? You guys see this, this is blue thing around Pastor Guy? That's it's really a cape? It's is that a cape, Pastor Guy? It's a little too short for a cape. I wouldn't get very far with this. But uh, it's a hood. I could put it over my head, but it's kind of ugly. And it's an old-fashioned garment that says that I studied for a very long time in order to be a teacher. It's a doctor's hood. Wow. You have a question, Adam? So, I'm having a party this week. You're having a party this week? Is it a that's birthday great. party? Awesome. I know. That's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. And what else do you notice that Pastor Guy is wearing that I'm not wearing? That's kind of curious. A beard. Well, we both have beards. What, Adam? Yeah, these yeah, white, this white things. linen thing. It's, they're called bands. It's just an old-fashioned thing. All pastors used to wear them 100 years ago, but they don't anymore. And I'm a historian, so I'm interested in old things. Got it, got it. And so Pastor Guy is going to be leading a conversation on the seminary during our adult forum today, and he's going to be preaching during our sermon today. And one of the ways that we support the church like we support the capital C church, the big church, is that we have a partnership with the seminary, and the seminary has a partnership with us. Yes, and we are grateful that you are here. And we hope someday when you're big students and uh, interested in having a career, if anybody wants to be a pastor, you should come to us. Yes, yes, that's where I went. So, okay, can we bow our heads and fold our hands, and we're gonna say a prayer. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus, for schools, for teachers, and for your church. Help us to share your love with others this week. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys, so much. High five. Jet, what's... High five, high five. Have a great week. Thanks for coming. And have a great time at your party. Thanks for coming up. It's a big church. There's a lot of room to travel. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was so exciting in a way to hear the gospel lesson remembered, remembered and spoken aloud that way because it makes it so real and lively. I have a kind of love-hate relationship with this parable about the wise and foolish virgins because on the one hand it seems a little simple and maybe even a little bit unkind to the so-called foolish bridesmaids who were, after all, they were looking forward to the bridegroom's coming just as much as their better prepared Girl Scout sisters. And we, of course, as Lutherans, remember all the time that we are, that our salvation is by faith and not by works. So it would be easy to think of those wise sisters with their oil as those who hope to get a heavenly reward because of how well prepared they are and how hard they've worked to get ready for this event. They've been very careful planners. 
One of my pastor friends reached out on Facebook this week to ask, how could a Lutheran preacher preach that the kingdom of heaven was going to those who tried harder and prepared better? How could you reconcile Jesus, the bridegroom, accepting the one group and excluding the other just on the basis, basis of the choices they'd made about bringing oil? What does that say about their faith? Since, as I said, all ten of them clearly believed the bridegroom was on the way. All ten of them were excited. All ten of them fell asleep. Does just bringing a little more oil make that much difference to Jesus? Were the virgins without the oil so much worse than the others? So much that they should miss their chance forever and the door be shut in front of them? And why wouldn't the wise ones share? How could the bridegroom be so cruel? Harsh as it seems, that's what this parable seems on the surface to say. You mess up once and you're out of the will. But I just can't leave it there. Especially since it seems to fly in the face of what we Lutherans teach about grace versus good works. So, I did some digging this week in the works of the great Martin Luther himself and discovered that he preached on this text on October 21st of 1522, just a few weeks more than 501 years ago, in the university church in the city of Erfurt where he had become an Augustinian prior and later was ordained a priest. October 21st, the day of Luther's sermon, was also an important feast day in the tradition of the time. It was the day of Saint Ursula and her 11,000 virgin companions. And Luther preached on this text because it was the one that was actually assigned for that feast day. We have it on this particular Sunday, but they have it every October 21st on her day. And if you've never heard of the fourth century martyr Ursula, and the 11,000 virgins she gathered together and led on a pilgrimage through Europe, ultimately all to be killed by the Huns at Cologne. If you haven't heard of her, that's because you're not a medieval German Catholic. Her story was really widely known and viewed with great devotion by some and, by, and with some skepticism by others, even in Luther's time. He makes in his sermon at the beginning a little joke about it being Ursula's day, he clearly didn't really believe in it himself. But in the ancient legend, this Ursula was a princess from Britain who had been traveling to her bridegroom, a ruler somewhere in France in the fourth century, and she and her entourage of other young women, like in the story, were blown off course by a storm and they landed somewhere in Northern Europe. So they decided to make a pilgrimage to Rome instead. But when they got to Cologne on the Rhine, they were all killed. The city was under attack by pagan Huns. It's a preposterously high number of young women that Ursula had with her, 11,000. It's probably a misreading of an early manuscript of the story where the capital M, that often means an abbreviation for martyrs, was confused with the Roman numeral M, for 1,000. So Ursula and 11 companions makes a lot more sense. But that's off the point. By Luther's time, she had 11,000. Anyway, though that was the gospel lesson for St. Ursula's day, Luther doesn't waste as much time on it as I just did, because everybody already knew the story, and he doesn't want to give away any credence to those old superstitions, and especially about stories that glorify both virginity and martyrdom as ways to get to heaven. So he cuts right to the chase. And first he reminds us this parable is an allegory, not an anecdote. It's a symbolic story where the people are not actual people, but represent the ways people can be. It's not about five good and five less good individual young women. It's about what it means to understand and have true faith. But didn't they all have faith, you ask? Didn't they all equally be believe that the bridegroom would come? Yes, 
And in fact, they all saw him come. They all slept while they waited. His arrival awakened all ten of them. But in the moment when it counted, some had oil and some did not. They all had functioning lamps, but only some had oil left to burn. Here's where Luther says the symbolism of this parable really lies. The oil the wise virgins had is true faith, which transforms the person who receives it and changes them. Not just in their behavior, but in their essence. True faith turns them into living lamps, turns them into beacons of light. The gospel is preached, the truth proclaimed, and with the power of the Spirit, the hearts of believers are changed. Faith is not just receiving useful information from Jesus about God's mercy and grace, but an invitation to trust God completely. The goal of the good news is not just to make us happy, but to change us, to make us new through faith, into wisdom and love. We all hear the same gospel, Luther says, and with our mouths we all agree with it. But if faith doesn't change us, it is as fragile as the foam on the sea or the head on a mug of bad beer. Yes, that's really what he said. As bad, as, as, as fragile as the head on a mug of bad beer. True faith is not something we can own or carry in our pocket written in a notebook or buy from a store or a website like a bottle of oil. True faith is something that becomes part of us and makes us different because we have it. Anyone can want to live like Jesus. But does Jesus live in them? At the end of the night, when Jesus, the symbolic bridegroom, welcomes the wise virgins, it is because, because they have become already his. They belong to him all along. And in his love, they have been transformed into the believers to whom, God, to, to, to whom Jesus has promised grace and life. The other five still think it's about something they did or didn't do. For Jesus, it's about what has been done in them, for them, by faith and grace. No amount of oil could replace what the foolish virgins never had. The complete trust in Christ that starts with encountering Jesus and ends with our willing, trusting surrender to his love as something that is actually truer than any true thing we think we know and better than any good thing we ever did, more lasting than time and life itself. And this, for Luther, is the difference between hearing God's promise of forgiveness and mercy and grace and then just saying, oh, that's great, and going on with your life. And really, really hearing it. Hearing a message so profound and important and powerful that it changes you. It causes you to see everything differently and then shapes every choice you make thereafter. It's that faith that sees us through the long night of life's sorrows, that gives us strength to face the evil that humans do in the world around us every day. It's like the oil in the lamps, always ready to become light or warmth as needed. And that's what it means that the just will live by faith. That faith is not just a thing we say we have, but that's something that with Jesus' help has made us new, new people who can live with whatever comes 
and who have faith enough to last through this life and as long as it takes until our bridegroom comes and the promise of our resurrection is kept. May that be so for all of us. Amen. People of God, let us sing together our hymn of the day, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. to offer our prayers to God. O God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people, bring your salvation, center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. In your mercy, O God, 
for whom we long. Let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community that they are supported and loved. O God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or unemployed and comfort any who are suffering this day. For access to humanitarian aid amidst conflicts in Israel and Palestine, Russia and Ukraine, and all places of war and violence. For the areas of West Virginia affected by the massive wildfires. And those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation, fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness, help us to sing and dance with joy and, the, and tell boldly of your salvation. O God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and assurance of new life to all who grieve. In your mercy, We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, the peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As you finish sharing the peace, I invite you to be seated. Thank you for all of those who have continued to support the mission and ministries of Trinity. If you brought a gift today, there are baskets here in the front. You can place your offering in during Holy Communion or at the end of the service. For those of you joining online or prefer to give electronically, you can do so at trinitylandsdale.com and click on the Give Now button. We're going to continue by hearing our musical offering.
God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, you'll be invited to come forward for Holy Communion. There'll be four stations here today, one in each front of the transepts, and then two here in the front. You're invited to come forward with your hand uh, stretched out flat. A wafer will be placed in the palm of your hand. You're then invited to pick that wafer up and dip it into one of the chalices that contains alcoholic wine. There will be three brown tables, one in each front of the transepts and one here in the front that will have grape juice and gluten-free wafers. If you would prefer those elements, you are invited to help yourself. In front of each of the front pillars here, there are plastic bowls for you to place the cup. And if you have a gluten-free wafer, they're in a little tiny bag, and we will dispose of that at the end of the worship service. You're invited to stand or kneel around the altar rail in prayer and reflection before returning to your seat this morning. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord is with you. Also Lift with you. up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, there is a place for you at the heavenly banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Thanks. Now as our communion assistants come forward, I invite you to be seated as we continue with Lamb of God.
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood bless, strengthen you, and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Irwin, for being with us. Dr. Irwin will be speaking to the Adult Forum class at 945 in room 125, kind of on the state of seminary and theological education. So everyone is welcome to join that conversation. It's down our educational wing. Uh, please join us in the lobby immediately following worship. We have three cakes today. Thank you to the Veterans Ministry that's sponsoring uh, two of the cakes, and they have a display set up. Uh, you will also be able to uh, chat with John and Deborah in the lobby, as well as um, uh, uh, Pastor Bill, as there's a cake for him as well, too, on, on this last Sunday of him serving as our pastoral associate. There's also a table set up for the singing at Telegram sale beginning this week and the next two weeks where our amazing choirs will go in to some of the retirement communities in our area and sing for the residents, so feel free to stop by there. If you did not pick up yet, you're in Lansdale Lutheran. They are in the communication racks and in the welcome tables. Everything, including Christmas Eve worship, our tree lighting festival, uh, all of that can be found in here and so much more. Uh, I would like to invite forward this time our Congregational President Terry Lannon and Pastor Bill and Linda to come forward for our farewell and blessing. As they come forward, I remember it was back in July 2021 when Pastor Bill and Linda first came to Trinity as visitors. And I think a few weeks after that when we met at Backyard Beans for coffee together and Pastor Bill said, I'm a retired pastor on the way out of the lobby. And I says, you know, we're looking for some we're looking for some help here, and uh, we thought Pastor Bill would serve with us for six to eight months, right? Because that's how long it would take us to call an associate pastor, and it's been 25 months. And so thank you, Pastor Bill, for sharing your gifts and your leadership and visiting and preaching and presiding and working with us here at Trinity. People of God and Pastor Bill, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the preacher writes the following verses. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to seek, and a time to lose. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, 
of endings and beginnings. Today, we share a time of farewell with Pastor Bill, whose time as our pastoral associate ends. I thank the congregation. I thank each of you here at Trinity. I thank all the members or friends for the love, for the incredible kindness and support that you have shown me over these past 25 months. And I ask your understanding and forgiveness for the mistakes that I have made and for the expectations which are unmet. And I am grateful that my leadership has been accepted by so many of you. And with joy, I recall the many things that we have been able to accomplish together for the relationships and the friendships that have been formed. And it's with sadness, the many things we were not able to accomplish together. We receive your thankfulness and we offer our forgiveness for any failures and our thanks for all accomplishments. We accept that you now leave us to minister elsewhere. We express our gratitude for your time among us and ask your forgiveness for our shortcomings and sometimes flagging faith. Your influence on our lives will not leave us even though you depart from us. And indeed, I do forgive you your failures and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God and to the Christ we are called to serve. Do you, the members of Trinity and friends of Trinity, Lutheran Church, now release Pastor Bill from the duties of pastoral associate? Do you, Pastor Bill, release Trinity Lutheran Church from turning to you or depending upon you? I do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here at Trinity Lutheran Church? Let us pray. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future we rest in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughters and tears, our hopes and disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but now move in new directions. Until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Go now, Pastor, Pastor Bill and Linda, surrounded by our love and led by the promises of God the presence of Jesus Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we just, I just presented him with a gift from the congregation and a note telling him how much Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> How much we appreciated him filling in for us. He's adored and he's admired, and we are going to miss you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you to stand now for a final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, This Is My Song. Thank you. Page 887. 887 in your Cranberry Hymnal.
beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.